Hello there everybody, Jim from JD Outdoors here and today I think that we are going to do ourselves a little bit of a quarantine video. That is right. I've been saving some of this stuff that I've learned through the years and whatnot for days where shut in, rain, whatever, and today I think we're going to do something. We're going to do something awesome, even though it's beautiful. Look at this. I mean, it's not as sunny as it was, but it was real beautiful. Stuck in quarantine, so guess what? Today, we are gonna make one of these into a 24 to 72 hour survival kit. That is right. Standard ammo can, everything you need to live in the woods. Surviving, doing what you need to do for 24 to 72 hours. Now this kit, you can probably go longer than that, but this is what I'm gonna market it as because it's an oh crap, Something happened and we need to just be okay for a couple of days. That's what's in this kit and that's what we're gonna go through. So stay with me, stay tuned, and I'm gonna tell you what I personally put into my kits. So here is a quick overview of everything that is going in this kit. Start with our ammo box, right there, oh yeah. And this is everything that's gonna be going into it but I'll be going through all that with you guys as it goes into the kit. Now, I'm gonna be going one by one through this, throwing it into the kit as we go, and do a quick explanation of why I put it there. This is not an in-depth review. If you want one of those, I did film one, but it was like 30 minutes long, so I'm not gonna post that for you guys. But, if it's something that interests you, let me know in the comments. I mean, like, I don't know when comments on my videos yet, but that's okay. Leave a comment if you want to see a full in-depth review of everything that goes into this kit, but for now, I'm just gonna go through it quick and show you guys what is in here. The three basic principles that you have to cover for what items you select to throw in here is going to be fire, water, and shelter. Okay, if you can cover those three bases, you're gonna be able to survive for 24 to 72 hours like a king or a queen or whatever you identify as when you're out in the wilderness just killing it okay so I like to have redundancy I like to throw make sure that I have multiple ways to get what I want and you'll see that in these items that I selected also having things that are dual purpose are going to help out greatly because that reduces the amount of things that you actually have to carry because more than one thing does the job so I'm gonna take you through what I think personally needs to be in one of these kits, what you decide may vary, and that's okay. There is no one right way to do this. So here is a quick overview of everything that is going in this kit. Start with our ammo box, right there. Oh yeah. And this is everything that's gonna be going into it. But I'll be going through all that with you guys so after our ammo box, first thing I'm probably gonna throw in there is a whole handful of Ziploc freezer bags. These things are fantastic. You can carry water in them. You can keep your supplies dry. If you have a kit in this thing and you open sections of it, but you don't need to use it all at the same time, it keeps it dry, keeps it organized, keeps everything together. It's a good thing to have and it takes up almost no space in the bottom of your kit. Next thing I'm probably gonna throw in there is a foldable saw. Now, this is a cheap saw. This is as cheap as you can get. This is a dollar store special, but it will work, okay? The saw that I actually put into my kit normally, it's actually in my hunting kit right now, which is why it's not out here. But this is just goes to show that for $4, you can have a saw that, yeah. There we go. For four dollars you have a saw that opens up and it'll do the job for the amount of time that you're gonna be out there. Saw. Next up I have these guys. Now these are, focus, these guys here are charcoal fire starter bricks for your charcoal barbecues. They burn for like five minutes in an actual pretty good decent flame. So if you're trying to start a fire in a moist, <laughs> moist, in a moist environment, wet environment, these things will actually really help. 
And if you have them hanging around because you have a charcoal barbecue anyways, might as well. Next, we're gonna throw in a bunch of dollar store candles. Why? They carry a flame when you get them started. You can walk around so you can start new fires without actually having to light a new fire where you're going. It carries the flame. At night, they keep the boogeyman away and they're just a great thing to have around. A little bit of comfort, right? A little bit of home. In the middle of the night, it's really nice to be able to light up a candle and see what's going on. Good items. Next up, I don't, these are not essential, but they're something that I had kicking around that I thought, well, why the heck not? These are compressed camping towels. These are cloth towel, three little pucks. Now, these things are gonna be great because one, you could wash yourself off, get yourself feeling like a human again. You mix them with some water and they puff right up, wash yourself down. Two, they can act as a water strainer, right? So if you're having a very particulate filled water source, you can use this to strain all the big particulates out of your water before you go and filter it. So, and they can be used for first aid because they're sealed and self-wrapped and all that so you can put it as a compress multiple purposes fantastic little item to carry with you next up sewing kit this thing cost me three dollars and it comes with enough thread needles scissors anything i could repair any clothing i rip in the process of doing what i'm doing i could sew up cuts and gashes i could do all sorts of things with this little kit Kept in a Ziploc bag to keep it dry and separated and everything together. Fantastic little thing to have in your survival kit. Now, this next one is extremely important. You need to have yourself a little first aid kit. Now, you don't have to buy one of these kits, but you can go and build your own. But I bought this kit because for $11, it comes with everything you need for pretty much any basic first aid problem that you're gonna have. Each kit, as you can see probably through it there, you see these instructions? This all has tear open packages for whatever incidents you're dealing with. It has a burn kit, it has a cuts and scrapes kit, it has everything you need to deal with anything along with instructions. So even if you're not a trained first aider, this will get you through. And for $11 in a self-contained tamper proof kit can't go wrong next up I actually cheated a little bit and I bought myself a little survival kit now this is a survive outdoor longer soul kit and it actually comes with all of these items that you can see right here now this is a fantastic little kit because to buy everything separately, I would be buying everything that's in this kit, but buying it all together, it saved me at least $10, and it's in its own waterproof little kit. I can take this with me, just this if needed, and it's everything you need in here, right? So there is a survival blanket, which is big enough to go as a shelter as well, which is fantastic. You can have two people under it. You can use it as a shelter, as I just stated. Great little thing has a survival whistle. As we all know, whistles travel farther, yet you can hear a whistle further than you can hear a voice yelling at you. So a survival whistle, definitely needed. Your little tinder sticks, these are a great way to start fire, just like our little zip fire starters there. This will take a spark and burn and actually make a nice little flame. Little pocket compass, if you know how to do your your navigation and stuff. Compasses are very, very handy. I recommend you guys actually take a little lesson on learning how to do that. I might do a video later on it. Survival mirror, reflect sunlight to aircraft or rescuers that you can see on a faraway hill. Check yourself out, make sure if you're making sure you're looking good while you're out there surviving. Be fantastic. A little fire starter. So this just is like the sparker on a Bic lighter. It just shoots sparks out. A survival fishing kit and sewing kit, so it comes with fishing hooks, line, safety pins, uh, fishing leader, all that fun stuff, and a little roll of duct tape. Duct tape, believe it or not, extremely useful when you're out there surviving, so I would suggest it. 
This whole kit cost me $25 or so. And it's all done. Perfect. Next part, water filtration. I took it out of the box because the box was really big and bulky. But this is a Woods water purification pen and sack. So this kit here came, it's like a life pen. So, you know, this end goes down into the water, you suck water up through this end, and it filters it. It filters out 99.9% .9 of all bacteria and bad junk out of your body. This kit came with a bladder to fill up, along with debris filters and a little syringe for forcing water through. This kit filters 1,500 liters of water. So for one person, that's enough for 750 days out there, drinking two liters a day. And it cost me $27. Absolutely. Keep it in a Ziploc bag to keep it dry, out of the moisture, and all together, aces. Next up, windproof matches. There's two, two things that matches in here. This little container is dry. You can stuff more things down in here to save space if you want. Another way to make fire for yourself. Why the heck not? One of very important thing to always have with you is cordage. Cord, 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 rope, all that fun stuff. I highly recommend you guys get 550 cord or paracord. It's called 550 cord because it has 550 pound breaking strength. It has a cotton core that can be used for fire starter. It has individual weaved strands all the way through that can be used for sewing thread, fishing line, any number of good things as well as the outer sheet can be used as a low tensile strength cord when you have taken all the innards out of it. Fantastic item. Again, keep it dry, keep it safe. Next, get yourself a flashlight. A lot of people like to put headlamps in. I always have a headlamp in my truck with me and when I'm out in the woods I generally have it with me anyways. So this is just my Oh crap, this has a flasher, a high, a low, a infrared light all built into it. Real good bright flashlight. It's heavy, it's duty, I could hit something with that if I needed to. Always have a flashlight with you. To go along with the flashlight, always have your batteries, okay? I have four AAAs and four AA batteries in this little bag. Okay, switch them out every six months. What I would recommend doing is on the top of your can, put a piece of tape that says, you know, packed on this date, replace batteries on this date. Whenever you replace the batteries, put a new piece of tape on there. That way you always know that your batteries are gonna be good to go and dry when you need them. After that, get yourself a nice little multi-tool. Okay, and this is my Gerber. Multi-tool. It's my old one, yeah. so that's why it's in my kit. I got a new one. Has knife, pliers, saw, file, everything that you need in a multi-tool. It has it. Now you don't have to get yourself a Gerber. You can get yourself a cheaper Canadian Tire Special and it'll be just fine. But don't buy the absolute lowest of the low. Next, you need a good fixed blade knife, okay? Fixed blades are way better than folding blades in my opinion. I understand that a folding blade knife can store better, but this six inch buck knife here, it's robust enough to baton down through wood if necessary, and yet small enough that it fits in the can and I could fillet a fish or whatever I need to with this. Get my camera guy out of there. So use whatever knife you feel comfortable with I like this one because I don't have to tape it to the outside. It fits in the can, fits in my hand, it's sharp and it's a good quality knife. So that's why I put it in the kit. Couple of glow sticks. Always have glow sticks. Glow sticks are fantastic. Use them for comfort, use them for signaling, use them uh, to light your trail. I have two. I'll probably end up adding probably another four more to have a total of six. And I have a red and a green. Why not? 
Don't buy the cheap dollar store ones. Actually go and get decent quality glow sticks though because they'll last longer and they'll glow brighter. So if you're using them as a signal device, that's what you want. Next, Cliff Bar. 24 hours, you get hungry, you need something to nibble on. A little piece of comfort. This is what you need, right? Get some calories into you, get some energy, get yourself feeling better. Now, the last bag here, I'm actually gonna open this up and spread it out here. This is my miscellaneous bag. This is where I put all my little bits and pieces, right? I got one of these KFS, that's, you know, knife, fork, spoon kits here, has a little can opener on it. Had it hanging around, so I threw it in the kit. A couple of carabiners. These are not climbing rated, these are just your handy dandy little ones. You can tie stuff up with them, help with your shelter building, whatever the case may be. Knife sharpener, focus. You gotta find, of course, as well as on the back. This is for sharpening your serrated edges, so your saw and stuff on your multi-tool. For the five bucks it cost you, it's good to have it. Keep an edge on your blades. Little mini Bic lighter, you know. Easy peasy lemon squeezy fire, guaranteed. And last, I put this little game in here. You know, you gotta try to get the ball bearings all lined up and into the hole and you got the one big one that won't fit all the way through, but the rest of these will. It'll keep your mind busy while you're out there trying to do what you're doing. And keeping a positive mental attitude while you're out there and keeping your mind occupied is really going to help in the overall experience of you being out there and being able to not just survive, but thrive. So looking at it all, that's what we all are going to put into that. So, there it is, there you have it. That is how you make an ammo can survival kit. Now, is this the be all end all? Like, is that how you have to pack your survival kit? Absolutely freaking not. You can put anything in there that you feel that you f will have necessary to you when you're out and about. That's what I thought was necessary. Do I have some training in the matter? Yes, I do. But, as long as you cover those three basic principles, fire, water, shelter, you will be good. Add tons of cliff bars in there. Put more fishing kit into there. Add a breakdown 22 if you had one. Whatever you feel you need to put in there, put in there. Just remember that if you're building something like this, it is a 24 to 72 hour survival kit. You're not gonna need it to be out there running the world for a month at a time. This is a, oh crap, right? So, however you wanna do it, feel free to do it. Okay, if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. I'll answer them best I can. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. I hope everyone out there is happy and healthy and living their best life. I know many of you are stuck in your home right now with what's going on in the world, but please be courteous, be kind, love each other, check in on your friends, and I will see you guys again on another episode of JD Outdoors. <laughs> have a good one, guys. Thank <laughs> you.